Hello and welcome. Here I'm going to show you how to find the next completely empty row in Excel using VBA and macros. That would be this row in this data set. But I'm not only going to show you that, I'm going to show you a system that you can use so that if you end up in a situation like this, where one of your columns has some empty cells and your code thinks that this is the next empty row, it will not only tell you, hey, no, that's not an empty row. It will then go to the next row and the next row until it finds the next truly completely empty row. It may sound complex, but it's a really neat little simple system I'm going to show you and I'm going to walk you through all of the code to do it. Now, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell icon, and if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. Let's go to the VBA window now and get this going. Actually, I'm going to undo that real quick. We're going to start with the simple example first to get this row right here. So Alt F11 to go to the VBA window and then go to insert module and double click your module and let us make another macro here. Next empty row. And the basic code is so easy. First, tell it what worksheet you're going to work with. Give it the name of the worksheet, sheet one. Then what you want to do is to type cells open parentheses rows dot count that just gets the number of rows in the worksheet i'll explain in a moment then the column that you want to use to figure out what is the next empty row so do you want to use column a b c d e or f well sale id that's going to be a unique number that should be there for every record even though they're not all unique here, let's pretend it's a unique column of numbers. So it must always be there for every entry. So I'm going to use that to figure out what's the next empty row. So that is one. If it was column B, it would be two, three, four, and so on. So one for A, column one, close that guy up. Then we type dot end, then open parentheses, Excel up, close parentheses, then dot offset, open parentheses, one, and close the parentheses. And this will get you the cell in column A that is the very next empty cell. And then we can later check if it's actually an empty row. So let me get the address of this guy. And let's output it in a message box so we can visually see what is going on. And I'll explain exactly how this works in just a moment. So Alt F11 then Alt F8, and we are about to run a macro. It's going to use column A to figure out what's the next empty row, so it should return to us A12. So run the macro, and we get A12. Perfect. And now that we have that range reference, we can do whatever we want with it. We can offset it and then input data individually into these cells, or what we're going to do next is to make sure it's actually a completely empty row, you can do so many things. All you need to do is to get that range reference in the next empty row. Now, before I go on, let me explain conceptually what we just did programmatically. So what we did programmatically is we said, hey, I want to deal with column A. It's going to have unique numbers in it. OK, but I don't know what's the end of my data set. So how do I figure that out? Well, I go all the way to the end of my worksheet down here. That's the rows.count. So that is this guy right here, rows.count. And then I'm going to go up. And that is the dot end Excel up. It's the same as hitting control arrow key up on your keyboard. That then gives us the last cell that has data in it in this column. And once I have that cell, I then offset it one. And we go down one. And that's what the offset one does. This right here is the range reference. And then the dot address just gives us a 12. So that's the thing that we output in the message box. But now how do we check if this is actually an empty row? Well, we're going to change it a little bit. Let's go to the front and remove the message box. We are going to use the worksheet function count a. And that is a really, really great function. Equals count, and you see we have many, many, many options. And count A 
counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So what you can do, count A and select an entire row, hit enter, and it will give you a number. This row is completely empty, so zero cells in this row have data. If anything has a value, then we will get more than zero for that. And we can actually use that worksheet function with NVBA. So well, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to make it a little bit easier to use this by putting the result of this into a variable. So let's go up here and create a variable. This is optional, but you'll see it'll make the code easier to deal with. So dim the next empty cell as a range. And it's a range variable, so it can hold a range. And what we're going to do is to put it in front of this guy. Set next empty cell. I hit control space there to fill it in. Equals this. So now our next empty cell is stored in this variable. So we just write this whenever we want to deal with it. And right now we want to use a worksheet function. And you use it like this, worksheet function dot. And here you have all the worksheet functions that you can use. We want count A right there. And what do we feed it? We feed it a range reference. Do we have a range reference? Yes, we do right here in this variable is our range. So a next empty cell, but that's just one cell. I want to select the entire row, just like we did a moment ago in the worksheet. So I type period entire row. And that's going to tell us how many cells in that row have data in them. Let's go ahead and pop it into a message box at first. So message box and that and we should get zero and we get zero perfect so how do we change that into something that we can use in our code right i can see zero but i need to check for it so to check for it you do a very simple little check does that equal zero that's all we do add equal zero to the end of it and now it will return a true or a false value. So Alt F11, Alt F8, run that guy. True, the row is empty. But what if something has happened wrong and we do not have a value in the sale ID column? Then we go to run this code and we get false. So that means that row is not empty. So we need to keep going to find an empty row. And this is where a lovely little do until loop is going to come in handy. So let's hit enter, Alt F11, and we will comment this guy out, but I'm going to copy this check that returns true or false. And let's go here and make a little loop. Do until, and it says there's an error. We will fix that in a moment do until loop. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we want to run this loop until a certain condition becomes true, until this worksheet function equals zero. So do until, and we paste that guy in. This is our true false check. Once this equals zero, we are done. It will stop running. Now, how do we cycle through the next empty cell? Because we could be in an infinite loop here. By the way, if you get in one, hit control break or F in control break or F in control B if you're on a laptop. But we don't want to be in an endless loop. So we need to make sure that next empty cell offsets by one every time we run this guy. So we are going to reset the next empty cell. So set next empty cell equal to next empty cell offset one row. And now we will go down column A one by one until we get an entirely empty row. And let us output in a message box, next empty cell address. Let's see this code in action right now. So Alt F11, Alt F8. And what we should get is a 
12. So run it, and there we go, A12. It looks confusing, but it's really just a few things combined. So by the time you get below this loop, you are good to go. Now, if you want to get this file and work with the code that I have here, make sure to go to my website. I'll have a link to it in the video description, and you can download the file there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials.